My name is Matthew Halliday. One of my primary roles here at Encoder is Chief Evangelist. I'm also a head of product. If you think of data as being like a desert, you literally can go anywhere. You don't have to go on the pre-described path. So it's really exploratory kind of adventure. That's kind of what Encoder is trying to achieve as well, where we're saying, okay, can we explore data in a way that's not so rigid and so expensive? And you can literally go very quickly where you want to go to and analyze that data. The most punishing of operations you can ask any database to perform was joining data. And so we would do various things to remove joins for the sake of performance because we just couldn't get it to scale. What we did is we would say, okay, we need to get this data out. How can we do that? A lot of innovation was put into ETL, even to automating ETL, automated testing of ETL, into star schemas, order, automation of that process, and even a lot of innovation in the data appliances. What this ends up resulting in is ultimately, if you keep going through this process of every time business asks a new question, IT, you have to get involved and go through it, right? It's a complex problem to solve. These joins are by no means easy things to deal with. And to create a star schema that can answer any possible permutation of the futurist question that you don't even know is going to be asked is next to impossible. So the whole thing takes months. There's iteration after iteration on star schemas and maintaining them, and they get very complex. And so if you can think of your data as being this really high 4K quality image, but for some reason, you're just not able to view it, right? You can't view it in its entirety. You get to view it in little pieces. But really, the image looks like this. It's a lot more rich. I can answer a lot more questions. And if I was just looking at little pieces at a time, it's really hard to kind of get the whole sense of what's going on. And so this is kind of the ideal state, is to be able to look at my data like this and be able to understand exactly what brings it all together. We do bring the data into Encoder. So some people say, oh, well, that sounds like a data warehouse, right? And we go, well, yes, but we're not doing all of that star schema in ETL, kind of the traditional approach of that. We're really just replicating the data from the source system and then making it available. So what the Encoder data platform provides is the end-to-end. And so we can really say that can analytics start a lot closer to the BI tools and how do we short circuit this entire expensive costly process and make it redundant so you have another option. So you can be uh, maybe a lot more agile and leverage the Encoder platform to not have to go through all of these processes. The good news is though is you can, if you want to, leverage an existing data warehouse. And so if there's data sets in there, Encoder's not gonna say, well, I don't understand those. It can source from that as well. So you can actually have a hybrid approach where if you already have significant investments in a data warehouse, Encoder can source from that and then source maybe from new systems or answer new questions and bring that together. So you do have multiple options. It's not a rip and replace type strategy. And so Encoder is a columnar, it has in-memory technology a part of it, but that's not the sole reason why it's so fast. The really thing that sets it apart is the data map. And the data map is Encoder's ability to freely understand how all data relates to each other. So direct data mapping is our ability to say, let's take all that data in its original form and not have to change it. Every piece of data is linked. It does that in kind of a unique way. So we have multiple query engines, depending on the type of query you're running, a pivot table or an aggregate table or a search or a filter. Those engines will work together with that data map to always make the right decision. Direct data mapping enables us to do things a lot more effectively and efficiently. So fewer people can get more stuff done in a short amount of time. There's other benefits. So people say, well, what about snapshotting, you know, historical trend analysis? Those won't, might not be in your source systems. I say, absolutely. And that's the benefit with Encoder though, is that you can support those as well. So you can very quickly do things like as is, as was, additive, non-additive, facts in a dimensionalized model. I mentioned we compress data. We never <coughs> uncompress data. With Encoder, it's compressed. It remains compressed. Even when we join or do analytics, we always do it on compressed data. Encoda has metadata that understands exactly how pieces of data relate to each other. Um, at the end of the day, you, you can't give a data lake to business users and ask them to go at it, right? You're going to have to run some level of processing on it and put it into a format that then you can use somewhere else. So Encoda really can become either the perfect companion to a data lake because we've integrated with Spark and with other technologies um, like that, we can very easily source things out of a data lake into Encoder and then make it available. But I kind of think it's one way to, to start to see value from your data lake that maybe you're struggling to, to really get at what to do with this stuff. People will say, look, at the end of the day, whatever I used to do, I can do it five times faster in Encoder.